This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. A dilemma is a situation in which one needs to choose. Then, paano ako gagaling? It's an ethical issue. It's supposed to oh, help yeah. first. Or... Medical dilemma. Hi, I'm Sunny Del Rosario and you are watching Medical Dilemma. Influences, mainly those coming from Western cultures, have radically changed local values and lifestyles, especially among teenagers. Thus, the issue of teenage pregnancy has taken center stage. Various sectors of society continue to debate for and against what to do to address this, but lives are being lost as I speak because of mainly of a lack of understanding of health risks and complications. For this episode, we will examine the medical and ethical issues that are connected to pregnancy among teenagers. Now, joining me for the first segment is Dr. Elizabeth Ifurung Gonzalez, obstetrician and gynecologist, former president of the Makati Medical Society and cum laude graduate of Biochemistry University of Santo Tomas. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ifurung. Thank you, Sir Sani and Dr. Sanchez for inviting me to your show. Okay, Dr. Ifurung, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, let's uh, have a short discussion of certain uh, concepts and, uh, and principles that are connected to uh, pregnancy in general and uh, teenage pregnancy uh, specifically. Uh, first of all, now that we have a, a topic about teenage pregnancy, it comes to my mind as if it's a special uh, issue. So are there differences between pregnancy in teenagers and pregnancy in maybe what we would call mature females? Oh yes, there is because um, among teenage teenagers, they have not fully developed yet physically mm -hmm. and emotionally. So that's the big difference from that of the adult. So for example, if we take a look at the physical aspect, as you mentioned, yeah. uh, teenagers are not yet fully developed. developed yeah, so in uh, other especially uh, skeletal-wise, like the, skeletal -wise. Yeah, the pelvic, cav mm -hmm. pelvic bones are not yet well developed. So sometimes they will experience uh, complications during preg delivery. Uh, you made mention of the pelvic cavity. I mm -hmm. guess this is the uh, the space yeah. with, uh, for the baby in the pelvic the uterus area is where the baby goes through. Yeah, will pass through. So does it mean that the uh, the cavity is too small to allow for a normal? Yes, yeah, sometimes baby delivery? because they're still young. So mm -hmm. physically, even if their their bones are not yet well mm -hmm. developed, so that happens. That happens. I see. Uh, aside from uh, the uh, cavity difference, is there any other physical difference? Uh, like, for uh, example, the development of the, the ovaries or the fallopian tubes um, or the uh, uterus? Yeah, actually, that, that's um, usually the, in young women, their brain is not yet well developed, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is the one concerned with the hormones mm -hmm. uh, stimulating the development of the eggs in the ovaries. Okay, that so the, the, the eggs are not yet fully developed. No, uh, the, the mere fact that they got pregnant is their eggs have been fully developed, but the brain that controls the hormones is not yet uh, mature. That's what I see, I, I see. So I guess there is a, an emotional or psychological difference between a teenage mother or, and a yes, because fully mature mother. Yeah, that's, mm. that's correct. Okay. Uh, in your experience, uh, what are these emotional differences that you have observed? Um, I have few patients who are teenage, who have been pregnant at the age uh, as teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, emotionally, um, they are not really mature yet because you know they lack education, mm -hmm. and they really need the support of their parents. Mm -hmm. And luckily for my patients, the mother is usually with them, mm -hmm. and. They, if you don't insist on them or regarding the, the uh, importance of 
having prenatal checkups, mm -hmm. they usually don't go to you. So meaning to say they're not yet really ready for that pregnancy. Because okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. Accident. So what you're saying is uh, very, very young mothers are not fully prepared to both take care of themselves and their coming baby. Yes, yes, that's I see, and that leads to a certain complications yes. uh, during the pregnancy. Okay, now uh, considering that there are such uh, differences, what are the uh, possible risks and complications that could arise in a teenage pregnancy? Among teenage pregnancies, they have mm -hmm. higher mortality and neonatal rates. Mm -hmm. Like uh, in a study, um, it was mentioned that teenage pregnancies below 16 years old, they have four times risk of dying compared to adult. And below the, 16 yeah. years old. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's really the young maternal age. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. And then other things, they are more prone to complications like uh, they, they babies are usually low birth weights because of interuterine fetal growth restriction. Okay. They have a higher risk of developing hypertension and they also have anemia in the first place. They are already anemic and then if they get pregnant, the mm -hmm. more they are become anemic, um, they have the tendency to deliver prematurely also. I see. So the, the low birth rate, as you mentioned, yes. is actually a result of, sort of something like a the uterus being too small? No, to no, no. Uh, usually they are, the baby has poor growth. Poor growth? Yeah, yeah, poor growth. And this is caused by uh, what factors? Uh, probably during the pregnancy, mm -hmm. if they don't follow the instructions of the doctors that mm -hmm. they have to have a balanced diet, mm -hmm. they have to have uh, supplements. The doctor will usually give them uh, prenatal vitamins during pregnancy mm -hmm. and that includes um, multivitamins, iron, mm -hmm. the micronutrients, iodine, calcium, like that. Doctor, I'm, I'm curious, what is the youngest age at which uh, a female can get pregnant? Actually, as long as they already ovulated, there's mm -hmm. a tendency for them to get pregnant and usually that starts during menarche. Menarche, I mean, this is the first time they get mm -hmm. they get their menstruation mm -hmm. but there is a case in our institution who got pregnant at an early age at 11 years old 11 who, years old yes and who had mm -hmm. not had any menarche the first time menstruation he had, she has mm -hmm. not had any menstruation and then she got pregnant but in my in my experience the youngest i got was 14 years old 14 years yes. old okay so as far as long as the the female has had her first menstruation Usually, sir. Usually, yeah, there is already there's a this possibility. Case, isolated case, probably that she got pregnant even without without having, having the, first the first menstruation. menstruation yeah. Oh, okay. Meaning to say That's she ovulated. Yeah. So she ovulated she already, without yeah. the first yeah. menstruation. Okay. Now, uh, is there a special medical care regimen that teenage uh, mothers need to follow, uh, different from those of uh, mature mothers, or is it basically the same? Uh, basically, they, the same prenatal mm -hmm. checkups when a patient goes to us, whether teenage or, or young, mm -hmm. or young age or the reproductive age, mm -hmm. the same. But we have to in emphasize to the teenagers that they have to really follow the regimens that the doctor will tell them. Mm -hmm. That is to prevent the complications prenatally and during mm -hmm. an, uh, delivery. But basically, it's just yeah, the same the regimen. Same, yes. okay. uh -huh. Nothing really uh, mm -hmm. special. Okay. Now, what if uh, the, the female misses her period for the first time? Uh, what do you advise a female? Uh, that's the reason mm -hmm. why the patient, uh, the teenage, should go to the the teenager should go to the doctor right away mm -hmm. because if they are sexually active, there's a possibility for them to have been pregnant. If so, they are sexually active. Yes, if they are so because the moment you miss your period, of course the doctor will suspect that probably she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And if they come to your clinic, whether in the presence of the mom or, mm -hmm. in the, or whether the mom is not there, the fact that uh, they missed their periods when they were previously menstruating, you have to suspect pregnancy, even if they deny any sexual activity. I see. Yeah, you have to suspect pregnancy. So a female that is not sexually active and misses her first period has really nothing to worry about? Yeah, but 
most probably well, they might misinterpret the word sexually active. Mm -hmm. When we say, when I say that is, as, as long as you already have sexual activity, mm -hmm. you always suspect that. When we say no, not sexual active, I mean it is no as in virgin. That's yes. the only time that you don't suspect to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. And that's another problem. <laughs> That's another problem. What could be the possible problems? Yeah, there are it's... hormonal problems that the mm -hmm. patient does not develop, uh, does not get her menstruation mm -hmm. regularly, mm -hmm. even if she's not pregnant, especially if you're young, mm -hmm. because the brain that controls the hormones is not yet well developed. Okay. In, in your practice, Doctora, uh, do you have any sort of special approach when you are uh, Con, uh, sorry, assessing or, or uh, guiding a uh, teenage mother? Yes, especially if the mom is around and if they the have mother's not, yeah, around. If, the, if, the, if the teenager has not, uh, has not told the mom about her mm -hmm. pregnancy, I have this room in my clinic, the examination room, that mm -hmm. I will have to talk to her about the situation that I'm suspecting that she's pregnant. And then mm -hmm. if she agrees to that and then I just examine her. Sometimes even the mom will go to me and then, Doctor, don't examine her because she's a virgin. So, okay, I just close the door and then I proceed to my examination. I see. But so I don't you tell insist. the mom right away. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't tell the mom right away. I just mm -hmm. instruct the, the, the teenager to tell the tell mom the about, the, about the then, pregnancy later on. And then come back yeah. for the examination. But I do the uh, pelvic exam. You do the pelvic exam? Yes. I see. Okay, now, uh, I suppose in pregnancies, uh, in, in managing pregnancies, the partner also has a role. Okay? Uh, what do you think should be the role of the partner? Because, you know, I, I looked at lines outside OB clinics and most of the time I see only the females, you know, the mothers there. But I seldom see the fathers or probably sometimes not even. Okay? So is, is there really... Uh, a special role that partners must play uh, during the prenatal care period? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the father or the, the partner should always... It's better if the, the partner will go with the, with the, with the wife in, mm -hmm. in the, during the prenatal checkup. So that it's such a way that aside from giving her moral support, at least she, he'll be there to listen to the instruction of the doctor, remind the wife about the instruction of the doctor, mm -hmm. And so that uh, the couple will at least, uh, the, the husband will at least um, give support to the woman that mm -hmm. she's, that he's willing to take care of the mom and the future baby. Okay. Now, uh, going back to the, the teenager herself, okay, so assuming the teenager is found to be pregnant, okay, uh, what do you, or what can we advise mothers you know, of uh, such teenage uh, mothers also uh, so that they can have a, a better quality of life or maybe a more, uh, shall we say, supportive lifestyle? Because uh, from what I've observed, uh, teenage pregnancies tend to stigmatize or to uh, uh, ostracize very, very young women because uh, as we all know in our culture, we're quite embarrassed when we have a child a very young age who's already pregnant. But uh, I tend to sort of disagree with that because it does not provide you know, a healthy environment yes. for the young mother. So what can we tell our mothers or even our fathers about having teenage mothers as children? The parents should support their kids, especially now that they're pregnant, because they need uh, they need their support. Because you know the teenagers are usually not yet emotionally prepared, and then emotionally, another the, uh, emotional stability. Yeah, they, yeah mm. they're not yet emotionally uh, developed. And uh, but fortunately for my patients or teenagers, it's mm. always the mom and the parents who the mom and the father who who accompanies them during the prenatal checkup. Mm. But it's very important because, as you know, um, when you're young, you cannot, you don't understand the, the implication of getting pregnant at a young age. You're going to be a mother soon, mm -hmm. and you're going to take care of your baby while you're supposed to be playing outside mm -hmm. as a teenager. As a teenager, yeah. they should be enjoying life. Yeah. 
Okay, so before the parents you know, committing really to such responsibilities. Him, yeah. I see. So the, the special role of the, the parents of the teenage mother is to actually give them the support. support yeah, because okay, maybe moral support, even financial support. Yeah. To get especially the financial. No, especially financial support. Okay. Now, uh, when it comes to uh, special medical care, are there certain uh, teenage pregnancy complications that require close supervision? Yes, there are more. There, to start with, sometimes they are already anemic, so there are. So the anemia more, is one yeah. condition. So that will be. That will be worsened mm -hmm. by the pregnancy so they have to take uh, iron preparations the mm -hmm. moment they got pregnant during mm -hmm. the first trimester unless they are vomiting because sometimes we ask them to hold taking the iron if they are vomiting because the iron usually uh, mm -hmm. is, uh, is, uh, mm -hmm. aggravates the vomiting. I see. Aside from anemia, are there any other common conditions that teenage yeah, mothers because, need to watch out for? Yes, um, because most of the teenagers don't eat balanced diet, mm -hmm. so in the first place they are not healthy to start with. So now that they're pregnant, they have to take uh, reg uh, regular balanced diet mm -hmm. and more of fruits than uh, more more of fruits and vegetables. More fruits and vegetables. Yeah. Yes. Then they have to take vitamin supplements. Vitamin supplements. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Furum, for all that information. Uh, it's time for uh, our commercial break. Uh, you're watching uh, Medical Dilemma. We'll be right back after a few reminders from our sponsors. Okay. 